Hello everyone, this is Leo, and as promised, today I'll be showing you how to actually overclock your RAM. This video is mostly going to be a demonstration, and all of the information that we'll be using will be based on the frequency versus latency video, so I highly recommend that you check out the previous video using the card on the top right hand corner of the screen. So now that we know what frequency and latency is and we've looked at the various different timing configurations for our specified RAM kit, we're going to reboot the system and actually do the overclocking. From here on, what we'll see might be different for different manufacturers, but in essence, you're going to have to do the same thing. Once you reboot, you'll see a BIOS splash screen. You want to go ahead and press the button, which will get you to the BIOS menu. In our case, as you can see, it's delete, but in your case, it might be escape or F12, depending on your motherboard manufacturer. Now, once you're in the BIOS, you want to go ahead and check out the overclock settings. Once again, this may be differently labeled, so the keywords you want to look out for are DRAM frequency, DRAM timing mode, and advanced DRAM configuration. So once you've located this part of your BIOS settings, you can go ahead and start messing with the numbers. In our case, uh, the frequency ranges from 800 to 3200 MHz, however just selecting the frequency won't do it. If you haven't ever checked this out, you're probably on auto. So you want to go ahead and set the new frequency. We have overclocked from 1600 MHz to 2200 MHz, which is why this is set at 2200. But you have to figure out the actual timings to be stable at that particular frequency. Before we get into that, just make sure that you have DRAM timing mode set to link. This will ensure that the settings are applied across the board on different RAM sticks. So let's say if you're using two or four different RAM sticks, it is going to apply the timings to all of them. However, if you set this to unlink, then you'll have to set the timings individually for each stick. And if you forget to do that, the entire setup may not work and your system may just crash. So make sure you set this to link. I'm assuming that you have the same RAM sticks installed. If you have different, then well, it's going to be a lot more complicated. You'll have to find the different timings for each of the sticks and then find a compromise solution. But in most cases, you're probably using similar RAM sticks, so this will be just fine. Now, once you get into the advanced DRAM configuration, the menu can look very intimidating, but don't worry. Leave everything at auto. You don't need to change any of this. You just need to mess with the first four numbers the TCL, TRCD, TRP, and TRAS. So these are the latency numbers that you want to change. How do you change them? You just click on it and press enter. And you're like, well, that's funny, but how do I actually know which numbers work and which ones don't? For that, you'll have to watch the previous video. Basically, you have to find the different timing and frequency combinations for your particular RAM stick. You can find them online, on the manufacturer's website, or it might be listed at the backside of your package. But let's assume the worst case scenario and say that you have none of that. In that case, you're gonna have to experiment. So for example, this stick started out at 1600 MHz with these numbers being 10, 10, 10, and 30. So what you would then do is let's say bump the frequency up to 1866 and gradually increment these numbers with values of one and two. So I'd probably go with 11, 11, 11, 32. And I'd check that out. If I check that out, I mean exit the BIOS, apply these settings and reboot. If the computer does reboot successfully, it doesn't crash, the OS is stable, I know that that timing combination works. You can also do stress testing if you're into that. And once you've found out that a configuration is stable, you just keep going higher and higher until something breaks. So it's kind of a hit and trial scenario. Keep in mind the objective here is to minimize these numbers while maximizing the frequency. So finding out the minimum set of numbers at which we'll be able to run this RAM kit at 2200 MHz. In my case, this is the frequency to latency setup that I've found. In your case, it's obviously going to be different unless you're using the same Kingston HyperX Fury RAM kit. So once you've found all these settings and you're at a stable configuration, you wanna go ahead and exit, save configuration and reset, and you should be running at your overclock frequency. 
Now one important thing to note is not to stop here. You have to do some kind of benchmark to ensure that your new settings are actually better. Because in many cases what might happen is you might end up increasing the latency more than is desirable and you'll end up with an actually worse result even though you're now running at a higher frequency. So keep that in mind, do your memory benchmarks and compare the scores until you get something that was better than your previous score. And that's how you can optimally overclock your RAM. So I hope you found this video useful. This is Leo. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.